So I bought the Mac Studio just by itself, meaning no display, keyboard, or mouse. I thought all the peripherals that I currently use with my MacBook Pro would just work fine. And boy was I wrong because none of it worked. My whole unboxing experience was horrible. Setting up the Mac Studio was really challenging without having the proper peripherals from Apple. By the end of this video, you're gonna realize that you should not buy the Mac Studio by itself. If you're an average consumer looking for a plug and play option, then buy the whole suite of Mac Studio, meaning display, mouse, keyboard, and the whole nine yards. So it was Friday, March the 18th, and Apple just released the Mac Studio. I unfortunately was not able to order it in time, and the delivery times were all the way up to three months. So I decided to try my luck at my nearest Apple store. I finally arrived at the Apple store, there wasn't much of a wait, so I went in, and apparently they had both options available, the M1 Ultra and the M1 Max, the base model. In my case, I just wanted the base M1 Max, so I picked that one up and brought it home for unboxing. At this point, I realized that there was some residue left over from the unboxing, so I cleaned it up with my cloth. And for the first impressions, the Mac Studio looks and feels pretty amazing. It's really hard to imagine that this little tiny box houses so much performance. When you pick it up, it is quite heavy, but it does feel premium and chunky. On the back of the Mac Studio, you see four USB-C ports, which all four of them are Thunderbolt 4 ports. On the front, the Mac Studio with the M1 Max chip offers two USB-C ports, whereas on the M1 Ultra version, it offers two Thunderbolt 4 ports. In addition to that, you also get a 10 gigabit Ethernet port. Then we have the slot to plug in our power cord. Next to that are the two USB-A ports, and the final two are HDMI port and a headphone jack. I'm really surprised to see that Apple has brought back all these features. It makes using the device a lot easier. Oh, and I almost forgot, there's also the power button. Now that everything was fully unboxed, I was ready to set up the Mac Studio on my desk. And this is where all my problems began. First, I cleared up some space on my desk and underneath my monitor, I placed the Mac Studio. Great thing about the Mac Studio is that it's pretty compact, so it will fit well anywhere on your desk. And as a bonus, it looks pretty neat and clean. No more flashy look at me RGB lights here. Next, I quickly ran all the wires, the HDMI and the power cord from underneath my desk. I wanted to use my dedicated mouse and keyboard, which is the MX Master 3 mouse and the MX Keys mini keyboard. This works great on my MacBook Pro without any issues. I typically use it when I'm docked on the MacBook Pro. For some stupid reason, I thought these two would work just like a magic keyboard and mouse. Now, I admit that was my fault. I should have thought that this would not work since this is not an Apple keyboard. But then I thought I'll just use the USB dongle and then try to connect it that way. But that did not work either. I then also tried connecting it via USB cable directly to the Mac Studio and that did not work either. It almost seemed impossible to get the Mac Studio hooked up to my mouse and keyboard. Since this keyboard is a Bluetooth only keyboard, I couldn't use the wires to connect it with the Mac Studio at initial setup. What was even more surprising is that when I tried connecting the MX Master 3 with the USB dongle that they provide, it still would not connect with the Mac Studio at initial setup. 
And then I even tried connecting with the USB wire. It still would not connect. So if you're looking to get the Mac Studio, then just go with the Apple Magic Mouse and Keyboard because these third-party solutions from Logitech or any other company will not work at initial setup. What ended up working for me is my old wired keyboard and that hooked up properly without any issues. If it wasn't for this keyboard, I would have had to run to Apple and buy a magic keyboard and mouse or something. Once I got my keyboard working, I breezed through the setup, put in my Wi-Fi information, accepted all the regular stuff, enabled location services, set the dark mode, and then bam, we were in Mac OS. At this point, I was able to go into system preferences and connect my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse properly. Finally, I resolved all my keyboard and mouse issues, but immediately I ran into the display issues. You see, I used this ultra wide Samsung monitor which has a resolution of 5120 by 1440p. On the Mac Studio, using the HDMI cable, I only am getting 3840 by 1080p, which is like really, really horrible right now. The text isn't sharp and it just looks awful. Upon doing some research, I found that this is also a common issue on the Mac Mini and I've bought a solution for it. So in my later videos, I'll post that solution soon. I really hope that the solution works for my display. On the other side, the MacBook Pro works just fine with my ultra wide display. I get full resolution. So I don't know why this is happening on the Mac Studio. If I cannot get the display to work, then I might just have to return the Mac Studio because I really need that ultra wideness. So the point I'm trying to make is that if you're gonna get the Mac Studio and you're gonna try and use your own peripherals, meaning mouse, screen, and keyboard, then your mileage may vary because in my case, none of the things worked out of the box. So I had my solutions by using a wired cable, keyboard, and whatever. I got it going, but for an average consumer, for an average consumer that is not a tech person, just wants the thing to work right away, then it might be a challenge to set up the Mac Studio just by itself. Trying to set up the Mac Studio in 2022 reminded me of Hackintosh days when nothing used to work and you had to use these text files and do whatever to get the Bluetooth and screen and display everything working. So it kind of felt like that using the Mac Studio. Now I do admit if I went to Apple and bought the whole suite, meaning screen, keyboard and mouse, then I wouldn't have faced this problem, but I'm not gonna just throw away my 49 inch monitor and my $100 mouse and keyboard. The next thing that I wanna cover is fan noise. This Mac Studio is not silent by any means. When you have it turned on, you can hear the fan noise in the background and it's a little annoying. On the opposite side is my MacBook Pro, which does not make any noise at all. I tested this by doing a decibel test using a random app on the phone and the ambient room temperature with everything turned off is about 27 decibels. With the Mac Studio turned on, it gets up to 33, 34 decibels. So give or take, it's about five to six decibels louder. Now you can hear that in the background, like a little hum or little noise, you know? The fact is that the fan runs all the time. There's no way to turn it off. Unlike the MacBook Pro, where the fan only turns on when it gets really hot. Maybe Apple cheaped out on the heatsink or something like that. I don't know, but you can clearly hear the hum. So the next thing I wanted to cover is audio. Now, this audio sucks. When you compare the audio to the MacBook Pro, it's like day and night. There's no comparison at all between the two. Also, the Mac Studio sits to the side, so the audio is not coming directly at you. Also, the audio is not loud at all. Like, I had to turn it up all the way just to listen to a song. So, so I don't even know why Apple decided to put the audio in there. Overall, I'm not really impressed with the Mac Studio. So, the only place where the Mac Studio exceeds is performance. I mean, sure, it's got extreme performance with the M1 Max chip at a reasonable price at $2,000. But can you really use this machine at that price point? In my case, I don't think so. Unless you jerry-rig it, then you can definitely use it. But out of the box, you can't. With that in mind, I'll be doing some more testing, some more benchmark. I try to do real-life benchmark when editing videos and doing all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned. I'll be making some more videos on this Mac Studio. And as I go along, I'll see if it's worth keeping this machine. Until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next video.